Hi, this is DIY Just from DIY Nexus. Today we have another UPS video. It's on how to replace or rebuild the battery pack in an APC Smart UPS SUA 1000 XL. Just letting you know, I see your comments and we have some new Instant Pot videos and new tool rebuild videos planned. First a disclaimer, I'm not an expert and as always, if you're uncomfortable working with electronics, please contact an appropriate repair technician. Here we have an old smart UPS from a friend. This is a big heavy unit. It's failed. Generally when these fail, or the batteries in them fail, when you try to turn them on nothing happens. This unit's actually plugged in right now. But I can push all the buttons and nothing happens. That's because these have some type of a voltage limiter inside. When it sees that the batteries are low, it won't allow it to come on. So for us to replace the batteries, we need to open it up and take the old pack out. Here are the tools we're going to use. Some packing tape, a notepad and pen, some type of pliers, you could get away with channel locks, a wrench or a socket, a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, and a knife or scissors to cut the tape. The first step in the process is to disconnect it from the wall. Then we'll turn it around. On these larger UPS units, there's an external battery connector. When you unplug this, it'll disconnect the battery internally. So we're going to take it out. Now we can turn it back around so we can work on the front. To get the batteries out, we need to remove this plastic front faceplate. It's held on by, I believe, four metal and plastic anchors that are basically spring-loaded. So you can see there are finger indents on the top on each side. We're going to grab there and pull out first. As you can see, there's a ribbon cable attached and it's not very easy to disconnect. So we're just going to set this on top of the UPS. Now we'll use the Phillips screwdriver to remove the top two screws. This metal panel should tip downward. As you can see, this battery's already been replaced before as we must have labeled it previously in 2012 and in 2014. So to get the pack out, which is this entire piece, we need to pull it forward. Sometimes these can be quite hard to pull forward if the batteries have swelled. In that case, you may need to use flat bladed screwdrivers or other tools to kind of pry the pack out. Let's hope this one comes out easily. If you do use it, be careful when you pry from each side so that you don't puncture the batteries or really deform the case. Since it's out far enough, I may be able to just grab it and pull. There we go. You can see the large power connector that needs to be disconnected. Simply pull both sides to take it apart. Now that it's apart, we'll remove the UPS so we can just work on the battery. You're at the point now where you need to decide if you'd like to replace the entire battery pack, or if you'd like to rebuild the pack with new batteries. Amazon has the APC Original Equipment Battery Pack model RBC7 for around $144 plus shipping. They also carry an aftermarket version for around $80, including shipping. I'll link them below. On the other hand, if you're willing to do a little more work, you can rebuild the pack with good quality aftermarket batteries for even less. You'd start by checking the existing battery specs, voltage, amp hours, and terminal size, and order a similar item on a reputable site like chromebattery.com or Amazon. We'll disassemble this the rest of the way so we can check those specs. To start, I'd like to take this plastic cover off so that we can access the terminals on the left side. This one's already been taken off before, it's just taped on with tape. If we're careful, we can reuse it. You can see the original was some double-sided sticky tape that's been damaged, and clear tape works just fine. Now you can see the left side fused link. We're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver and a set of pliers to pull that fuse out. If necessary, take a picture of the wiring so you remember how to reassemble it. Now 
We take this end off first to ensure that while we're removing this end, we don't accidentally short the two terminals. Now we'll separate these two batteries. In this case, since they've already been separated before, they're just held together with clear tape. We'll cut that with a knife. If this is an original battery pack, it'll probably have double-sided tape, so it's nice to use some type of plastic pry bar to get them apart so you don't damage the cases. And there we have it. Now we can see the information we need to order replacement batteries. You'll want to match the size, the voltage, the amp hours, and the terminal type. I ordered these two for around $65 shipped. They arrive quickly and are a perfect match for the original. Next thing to do is rebuild the pack. We'll put these back together just like the old one. As you can see, positive to negative, positive to negative, facing together with the words in this case. Now we'll use some clear tape and tape them back together. Now we'll replace the terminals in the reverse order that we remove them. As you can see, we went black to black and red to red. We'll turn it around and do the fuse on the other side. Last thing to do is to reattach the protective cover. Of note, there may be two protective covers on these. Since this one was rebuilt prior to this, I suspect the other one was broken or lost. They're not totally important to the operation, but they do make it safer to insert and remove the battery. If yours happen to get broken or lost, you could put a piece of tape across here to protect the terminals as well. Now we'll move this out of the way and put the UPS back on the table so we can install it. Installation is basically the reverse of removal. Reconnect the connectors. And you're going to feed the battery back into the opening. When you do, be careful about these wires. In the case of this UPS, these wires will lie flat against the back of these batteries. There's the space in the back of the battery area for them to sit. When you're pushing it in, if you feel resistance, stop and check those wires. But that went in quite easily. Now we'll close the door, making sure it's latched at the bottom and reinsert the two Phillips screws. To reinstall the front, you want to look at the four tabs, understand where they go, and also there's a ridge at the bottom of this plate that will hook under these two tabs. So we'll start by putting the face under the tabs and then pivoting it up and pushing it in. The next step is to turn it around and plug back in the external battery connector. When you plug this back in, you may hear a pop or see a spark. Don't be alarmed, that's what this does. Now we can turn it back around, plug it in and test it. So we've plugged it back in and in this case it's an older UPS and you can actually hear the charge circuit working. Hit the test button or the power button and see what happens. It's 
going to go through its self-test. And there we go, it's working. I'm happy it looks like we've saved this from the scrap pile. Should work as long as it's plugged in and charged for the next three to five years. That's about the average lifespan for a set of battery in one of these. I like to write when the battery is replaced on a note and then stick it on the top of the UPS for the future. Let me know if you have any suggestions or questions in the comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching.